The following program, Normal Show Live, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... We love the earth. Normal Show Live! Marijuana Nation! Now, here's your host... Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belvin. Good afternoon, tokers and tokets, and welcome. It is Tuesday, September 6, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Welcome to the show. I hope y'all had a great Labor Day weekend and got to take some of that extra time off that you all deserve so much. I know I had myself a great time. We enjoyed the opening kickoff weekend of college football season. Well, Maybe not all of us. Let's turn to the Pirates Cove where we talk to Ganja John back there. You mother. <laughs> so sorry. Boo. <laughs> so sorry, John. We had a poll up as to whose uh, college football team would lose first. And unfortunately, John's team won the poll and I had, lost the I game. I had hope. I had hope. But uh, yeah, they, did, they lost. Yeah. Oregon Ducks lost. Boise State won. Alabama won. Hawaii won their game against Colorado. Let's bring in uh, Wiz Coleco here who's hanging out on the uh, stage right. How you doing, Coleco? <laughs> Hey, 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 oh hey. Yeah, see, that mic is crazy. Yeah, but hello, I'm that here. That mic's crazy hot. And Hawaii did. We're crazy hot this weekend. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, Todd Armstrong is here as well. He's going to be joining us later on in Todd's Toker Topic. So uh, we'll have that. And also, Todd, you're uh, uh, doing a lot of MC work at the Hempstock this weekend. Yeah, uh, Saturday night, I'm hosting something, and then a uh, normal live show, and then uh, also as well, uh, all day on Sunday. All right, well, we'll check that out, and uh, let's go to our virtual studio now in beautiful Grass Story, Oregon, where Cannabis Carrie is waiting for us. Hello, Carrie. Hi, guys. Welcome back from the long weekend. Yeah, glad to have you here. Uh, we've got all sorts of great stuff coming up on today's show. Uh, in the Electric Tuesday, we've got a brand new uh, tune from the Symphony of Science people, the Quantum World. Uh, at half past, we're going to do a cannabis conversation with uh, my very own Mrs. Radical. It's time for our interview with Alternative Medical Choices, our, uh, one of our prime sponsors here on the show, so we'll get that. Todd's topic uh, after that, and then a little time for a Radical rant and some uh, good news, bad news out of San Leandro, California. But before all of that, we get to the uh, hemp headlines and cannabis carry. So what do we have in the news today? Well, today we're going to cover a couple of the newer medical marijuana states. I'm going to let you know where they are at in their uh, dispensary uh, programs. Also, I think you're going to enjoy this story. Uh, There's one city in America that is employing some uh, steampunk justice to fight marijuana growers. I'll tell you about that as well. (laughs) Okay, I'll also follow that up with a a short little story from the Chicago Tribune, which is notable for what it doesn't say. This will be very interesting. You know how I like to look at the media and how they frame things. All sorts of that coming up later on Normal Show Live. Plus, we've got Toker Talk Radio in Hour 2, so stay tuned. Plenty of stuff coming up on the Normal Network as well. We'll get to all of that later. We're right back after this. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation.
In today's busy world, we're inundated by advertising for all types of pharmaceuticals that come with a laundry list of potential side effects. Shouldn't you have better medical choices? Natural alternatives to pills pushed by Big Pharma? At Alternative Medical Choices, you could choose natural, safe, and effective alternative therapies that are right for your budget without nasty side effects. Cannabis, or marijuana, has been a legal medicine in the Pacific Northwest since 1998. Our doctors will help determine your qualifications for a medical marijuana recommendation in Oregon, no matter where you live. Our massage therapists will ease your aches and stress with soothing hemp seed oil or cannabis-infused massage salves. We also offer acupuncture, Reiki, and other alternative health therapies. Call Alternative Medical Choices in Portland, Oregon at 503-288-5579 or visit our website at www.altmedchoices.com. We specialize in out-of-state recommendations. That's www.altmedchoices.com or call 503-288-5579. Hey, this is Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger Seeds, TGAgenetics.com, and you're listening to The Normal Network. Hey, Tokers, this is Radical Russ encouraging you to check out the great music this summer. And one group you should definitely check out are big supporters of normal and marijuana legalization, and that's Slightly Stupid. Get all the details online at SeedlessSummerTour.com. Slightly Stupid. Go, we don't need no cocaine. Revolution. Revolution. Swayze. And Cisco. It's the stoniest show of the summer. Coming to Missoula, Boise, Redmond, Washington, Eugene and Jacksonville, Oregon, Lake Tahoe, Berkeley, San Diego, Salt Lake City, Aspen, Denver, Asbury Park, Wilford, New Hampshire, Philadelphia, Boston, New York, Baltimore, Charlotte, Cocoa Beach, Boca Raton, St. Augustine, Atlanta, Raleigh, Columbus, Ohio, Chicago, Mesa, Arizona, and Irvine, California. Don't, Don't miss, miss it. it. For more details, visit SeedlessSummerTour.com. Seedless Summer Tour is sponsored by Seedless.com, Sector 9, Groove Shark, Revolution Vodka, and Silver Surfer Vaporizers. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis... It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. The medical marijuana program in our nation's capital that is slated to begin soon now has a large field of applicants to choose from when it comes to who will run the city's 15 dispensaries. We reported to you last month that former talk show host and medical marijuana activist Montel Williams was seeking one of the spots to open his own dispensary in Washington, D.C. It seems that Montel has some competition. It has been more than a year since the District of Columbia voted that the city should recognize medical marijuana and put a program in place so the citizens that qualify will be able to use cannabis as an alternative health therapy. Part of the program is that patients will not be allowed to cultivate their own medicine at home, but they will be allowed to purchase it from a dispensary, of which they will allow 15 spread across the city. This week, the Department of Health in Washington, D.C. announced that since they opened up the application process a few weeks ago, they now have more than 50 individuals or groups that have been okayed to apply to operate a dispensary. Many of the contenders that were speaking publicly about wanting to open, operate a dispensary have dropped out of the running, such as a hydroponic supply store owner, a sound technician that dreamed of a bakery full of cannabis-infused baked goods, and about a dozen others. Those that dropped out of the application process said that the city's regulations were too restrictive to turn a profit. At least five pulled their applications out of the running this week because of a recent change in the regulations, increasing a fear among the entrepreneurs that the regulations will get even more contentious or that the feds may still step in at the last minute and shut everyone down. Probably the most successful applicants are those that have assembled an array of experts and are opening under the umbrella of a well-connected group. For example, one group of applicants are older women that are seeking both cultivation and dispensary licenses. That group includes a well-connected lawyer in the city and other insiders such as Johnny Rice, a former D.C. council member's aide. There are a few groups made up of all medical professionals, including one of the country's top urologists a psychiatrist, and an ophthalmologist who make up a group of applicants. Among the 50, there are owners of alternative medical clinics, some former lobbyists, a billionaire's son, the fiancé of rapper MIA, and a well-known businessman from Chinatown. Many are motivated by money, of course, but many others are motivated by personal experience with medical cannabis. Now, the next step for the process is to make their cases to advisory neighborhood commissioners that will have a say on whether the dispensary in question will make a good neighbor. 
The health department is also making all the applicants sign a statement that acknowledges that growing and selling marijuana is still illegal under federal law, a step that caused a few applicants to bow out. Under new and growing additions to the regulations, now the applicants must not only sign that statement, but they also must repeat it verbatim that the city-issued license does not actually authorize them to break federal law, and if the feds decide to go after them, the city isn't liable. But still, with all that, more than 50 applicants are still in the running. I think they should be forced to uh, recite it verbatim on videotape with their hand on a stack of Bibles and their children held above a flaming pit of vipers. Then, only then, will we know for sure that they know that it's federally illegal. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, if that's the hoop we got to jump through now, that's the hoop we got to jump through now. Uh, a couple of notes on this thing, though. Um, 15 dispensaries. 15 dispensaries in the city of D.C. Meanwhile, Chris Christie in New Jersey was flinching at six for the entire state of New Jersey. <laughs> right? So, uh, I, I don't know. I guess the people in D.C. can handle themselves better than the people in Jersey. I guess it would turn into Jersey Shore if we had too many of those. Uh, oh, wait. It already is Jersey Shore, isn't it? Uh, other thing, Montel and all these people, billionaires, uh, the, the, the fiancés of rappers getting involved in this business. Uh, interesting group of people wanting to make money off of medical marijuana, isn't it? You don't see them, like, you know, getting into big uh, investment firms that uh, invest in traditional medicine, that invest in, you know, pharmaceutical remedies. Or, or hospitals or anything like that. They seem to be very interested in the sales of marijuana. I wonder, I wonder why that is. Look, uh, it's been since 1998 that D.C. voted on medical marijuana, uh, passed it by a 69% margin through all of Congress, you know, holding them back. It's kept until 2010 before that was allowed to go through. And now in 2011, we're still dinking around trying to figure out who's going to open up the dispensaries. This is the long, slow road of medical marijuana that has to be trodden because we got to be careful not to let any of the healthy people smoke marijuana. Oh, God, the sky will fall. It would just be so much easier to pass H.R. 2306. Let's just legalize marijuana, stop making a federal case out of it, and let the patients and the healthy people have it. Now, Delaware is another state that's trying to get their medical marijuana program off and running. Delaware's medical marijuana law, Senate Bill 17, requires that their state's Department of Health and Social Services needs to start seeking dispensary operator applications by July 1st of 2012. They will open the process and then six months later they will award the highest scoring applicants a license to run just three dispensaries in the entire state. Now, if the state uses the entire 18 months it is allotted under the law, it could be the spring of 2013 before there is any medical marijuana available to qualifying patients. Now, activists are crying foul over all the red tape that will be required to get the program implemented, saying that waiting 18 months to help seriously ill people is cruel. With the new trend in medical marijuana states trying to regulate dispensary options to get medicine to new medical marijuana patients, it's proving to be a nightmare of bureaucratic hurdles and red tape, which in the end offer no protection for business owners who must have a team of lawyers on retainer just to deal with the legal issues that continually pop up, or the very real threat of a federal crackdown or raid, depending on the current administration. Now, Governor Jack Markell signed the medical marijuana bill in Delaware into law in May, and most of the people who worked hard to get it passed did not see the two-year wait stretching out before them. Representative Helene Keeley, the Democrat from Wilmington who co-sponsored the law, says that they do need to take their time with the Department of Health and Social Services to make sure they get it right from the very first day. The cautious approach with the new medical marijuana laws in the country are making some advocates frustrated. Now, we just talked about New Jersey, and even though ha there has been some recent progress, the fact remains that 20 full months after the law is passed, not a single license or patient ID card has been issued. This surely wasn't envisioned by the proponents of the law when they were fighting for it to be signed by the governor. Delaware faces a similar issue as New Jersey and Washington, D.C., because there's no home cultivation allowed in their medical marijuana programs, leaving any patients dependent on the state to get their medical cannabis. The state, in turn, is leery of the process of cultivation of marijuana due to the federal laws that prohibit it. Advocates call the no-grow programs as less patient-friendly than the more liberal medical marijuana states that allow patients or caregivers to grow marijuana for them. Waiting five months for a marijuana crop to mature might sound cruel to someone who is just diagnosed with cancer, but losing your battle with a disease in the two years it takes for a state to get a program going is becoming a reoccurring nightly news story that makes those five months seem like a reward. Activists in potentially new medical marijuana states are learning from our 
they don't stop with medical marijuana laws in the country that are taking away the right to cultivate cannabis, and it might take their uh, to, might take away their right to use it altogether. Oh my God! You know th this red tape. You know people suffering, waiting to get medical marijuana, and a lot of times, you know, like the New Jersey law was passed specifically for people who had less than twelve months to live, right? So I mean, that was written into the law, and now those twelve months have passed. You know, long, long ago. Now Delaware is going to be waiting till twenty thirteen, and all of this, while while people could, if these states had a provision for home grow, they could find a way to get a hold of some medicine. I mean, there are people with plants that could be up. You know. It, toward the end of their vegetative stage, turn it over to a patient, give them a few weeks to flower it. They could have some medicine. They could actually get some relief here. And and believe me, a lot of them are doing that right now. They are taking the risk of being a criminal. They're taking the risk of going to prison because you don't have really much of a choice. It's suffer or break the law. And here, the people of a state, through their legislators or through an initiative process, but in the East Coast, mostly through these legislators, come up with a way to help alleviate this suffering. And we're letting red tape and bureaucracy allow these people to suffer? This is shameful. Let's get these laws fast-tracked through. You know, whenever it comes time to bomb someone, whenever it comes time to spend some money uh, for the cops or build a new prison, they always seem to fast-track that money through. Why can't we fast-track these medical marijuana laws and get these people some medicine? Now, plans in Ogden, Utah to fight marijuana crimes now include a deputized dirigible that will slowly and silently patrol the city by air. The 19th century innovation of a blimp will be used to fight modern crime at the cost to the city of Ogden anywhere from 15000 to 40000 and is being constructed for the police department by Weber State University's Utah Center for Aeronautical Innovation and Design. The 50-foot airship will be unmanned and equipped with surveillance cameras, navigational equipment, and even some advanced weaponry of sort. Officials are making light of the weaponry plans, saying that they are not offensive weapons, but defensive ones, since the unmanned airship will be flying low over neighborhoods and obviously pissing off residents, some of whom may try to take out their frustrations on the lack of privacy in the city on their friendly police blimp. Actually, officials had made the plans for the blimp a year ago, and it was supposed to be up and running about four or five months ago, but now it is slated for a December virgin voyage into the Ogden skies. Now, there has been much criticism in the local editorial pages for this steampunk version of justice, such as the invasion of privacy as surveillance cameras capture backyard barbecues and the occasional nude sunbather. But it will also catch any marijuana growing in your backyard. But Ogden Police Department's crime analyst, Dave Wheeloth, told the local paper, the Standard Examiner, that it would be unlikely to find marijuana plants growing between rows of corn. So a tip to backyard growers out there, right from the Ogden Police Department, learn to love corn. Another citizen points out with the possible $40,000 price tag that this very same technology could be gotten from Toys R Us these days with the new must-have Christmas toy, the Air Swimmer. It's only 40 bucks, and for another $29.99, you can add a webcam to the fins. Yes, the Air Swimmers are all shaped like cute little fish. So be careful, Ogdevillians. Big Brother is moving in this winter to make sure the city is safe. Just watch the friendly skies to know that the police are on the job and keeping rogue gardeners at bay. Oh, the humanity! <laughs> we could have blimps now <laughs> flying over with uh, infrared and flying over the cameras taking a look. I love the defensive weaponry. What kind of defensive weaponry do you put on a blimp to protect it from people trying to shoot it down out of their backyard? Because... Uh, I don't know. I know people in Utah, and I know some of the weaponry they're packing. <laughs> and uh, I don't think you can. I, I don't. I don't. I don't see what anti-aircraft missiles. <laughs> what, what the hell are you gonna do here? Uh, th yeah. Uh, last thing we need is blimps flying over, low flying over our neighborhoods here, keeping a watchful eye to make sure that people aren't planting the wrong plants. Can anyone see how absurd this has become? How absurd this war on drugs has become? How much our police force has been militarized against? our own populace we our, our police force being used in domestic situations something that you know abraham lincoln warned about you know suspended uh, a posse comitatus back there in the, in the 19th century uh, this is something we need to bring back we need to bring back our police force being someone who's to protect and serve us not to search and arrest us there is nothing to fear from us growing marijuana it's time to legalize this and put these police uh, surveillance uh, techniques and money and resources 
towards solving real crimes. You know that the the uh, clearance rate on murder in this country is about like 25% or 50% on rapes. It's like 25%. Uh, I think our cops have better things to do. I don't know what is going on. It is very weird. And we rebooted and everything. Oh, well. We'll, uh, we'll hope for the best and uh, hold on tight. We'll be right back after this. It's 20 after the hour. And we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Hey, is it 420 yet? This is Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine, and you're tuned into Normal's Audio Stash. USVI normal go. Broke down barrier. Herb is medicine to. Broke down barrier. Boost the economy and. Broke down barrier. It's helping other states. Broke down barrier. Cannabis for legalized to. Broke down barrier. Join and speak your voice. Broke down barrier. We're gonna change the law. Broke down barrier. We got to educate. Broke down barrier. Yeah, this is Nayora, you know, bigging up USVI normal, working to legalize cannabis, you know, for the whole of the Virgin Islands. USVI normal is a non-profit organization working to legalize cannabis for the use by the industries and responsible adults. Do your part. Join USVI normal. Register to vote. Pass the word. Voice your opinion. You can change the law. Contact us for more information at 340-244-9179. You can also visit our website at www.usvinorml.org. Who is telling you the truth about marijuana? The government? Scientists? Doctors? Which claims are scientifically valid? And which claims are reefer madness? Every Wednesday, we separate the stems of propaganda from the buds of truth. And now, a message from former President George W. Bush to remind the American people of our responsibility in our nation's war on certain American citizens using non pharmaceutical, non alcoholic, tobacco free drugs. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. That's right, America, use less drugs. Put down the Prozac, the Vioxx, and the Levitra, and turn to the herb. Use less drugs. Our national policy is no longer just say no, it's now just slow down. You get me too high. I overanalyze If you've ever been too high Then you can sympathize You get me too, too high And I start to fly If I said some silly thing Then that's the reason why Down your computer It's time for your daily Toker Tunes, the best in 420 friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today we bring you tunes for Electric Tuesday, our segment featuring the best of modern electric music in the genres of dance, new age, house, and experimental. 
if you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tunes. All right, welcome back. You know, uh, one of the things we like to play on Tuesday are the Symphony of Science tunes that we pick up, and every now and then they come up with a new one, and today is one of those days. There's new music from the Symphony of Science. We're just going to get right to it. This one features Morgan Freeman. It's called The Quantum World. So, what are we really made of? Dig deep inside the atom and you'll find tiny particles held together by invisible forces. Everything is made up of tiny packets of energy born in cosmic furnaces. The atoms that we're made of have negatively charged electrons whirling around a big bulky nucleus. The quantum theory offers a very different explanation of our world. The universe is made of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. The universe is made of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. That's a wonderful and significant story. Suppose that little things behave very differently than anything big. Nothing is really as it seems. It's so wonderfully different than anything big. The world is a dynamic mess of jingling things. It's hard to believe. The quantum theory is so strange and bizarre. Even Einstein couldn't get his head around it. In the quantum world, the world of particles, nothing is certain. It's a world of the quantum theory offers a very different explanation of our world. The universe is made of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. The universe is made of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. That's a wonderful and significant story. Crazy things that things really are like. Are like. Are like. Electrons act like waves. No, they don't exactly. They act like particles. No, they don't exactly. We need a theory of everything. We need a theory of everything. Which is still just beyond our grasp. Still just beyond our grasp. We need a theory of everything. We need a theory of perhaps the ultimate triumph. The ultimate triumph of science. The quantum theory offers a very different explanation of our world. The universe is made of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. It's made of 12 particles of matter, four forces of nature. That's a wonderful and significant story. Wonderful and significant story. I gotta stop somewhere. I'll leave you something to imagine. You want a copy of that song for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker Tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing media and then Toker Tunes from the main menu. <laughs> Starfish Designs, makers of the original Gandalf. I'm Radical Russ, and when I want to relax, I always have my 17-inch long original Gandalf from Starfish Designs nearby. The hand-blown borosilicate glass is strong and easy to clean, and the design is sleek and sophisticated. Starfish Designs are available from Bend, Oregon at a glass retailer near you. For locations, call 541-788-GLASS. That's 541-788-4527. Hey, this is Subcool, coming to you live from the second annual Medical Cannabis Cup in San Francisco, and I'm on normal radio. Ever wonder how often to change your bong water? The most effective method for baking pot brownies? The best destinations for a ganja getaway? How to hide herb in your car? Whether to grow your own? How precisely to legalize it? Or how something as wonderful as marijuana ever got to be illegal in the first place? 
Finally, you can find all these answers and much more in the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook, featuring 420 things to do when you're stoned. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has covered marijuana in all its aspects and wonders, from cultivation to legalization to the herbs enduring and exalted place in popular culture. Packed with inside information, the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook rolls all of this collected wisdom together into a single indispensable ganja guide, including an entertaining look at marijuana's history, profiles of herb-friendly travel destinations and festivals, favorite potluck recipes from the High Times staff, smoking skills, advocacy and activism, essential marijuana movies and songs, profiles of famous cannabis strains, comprehensive growing information, celebrity endorsements, and much more. This is truly, finally, the ultimate guide to green living. The most devastating effect of the war on marijuana is that it is a war on everyday people like you and me. All week, we speak to the doctors, scientists, celebrities, and politicians who make up the professionals fighting for cannabis liberty. But we never forget about the tens of millions who use cannabis, the millions who need medical access to cannabis, and the hundreds of thousands arrested every year for cannabis, and the tens of thousands imprisoned under our marijuana laws. At Normal, we are the Cannabis Consumers Lobby, and we take this opportunity to share the experience of our cannabis community. All right, welcome back. It's about half past the hour, and uh, today we're going to take an opportunity to look at the business of medical marijuana recommendations with one of our prime sponsors here on the Normal Network, Alternative Medical Choices, and uh, as full disclosure, also my wife, Iva Cunningham, joins us here on the telephone. Iva, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Ah, glad to have you here. And, uh, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the difficulties that you've found in uh, trying to get medical marijuana recommendations out to the people. In in particular, just trying to, you know, from a business aspect, you know, some of the things you've had to go through, just trying to get basic banking and other services that most businesses, you know, wouldn't even think twice about. Well, I think it's always a challenge any time you open up any type of business. Um, you know, there's always challenges that come with any type of normal business, but it seems particularly difficult as soon as you offer anything that's cannabis-related. Um, you know, one of the difficulties that I've just managed to overcome that hurdle was just getting merchant services. Most of us don't carry around cash or write a check anymore. I mean, I don't know how long it's been since I've written a check, but... Um, merchant services are really important, but most merchant services won't even, they won't work with you, period. And the merchant services account, is getting uh, credit card processing, debit card processing, that kind of stuff? Correct, correct. And it even goes in even further in just marketing and who will, who will allow you to purchase their marketing. Hmm. Um, you know, I've been working with a variety of different groups like Groupon Now is one of them and um that was going really great and and then um um and then for some reason they got uncomfortable and then just shut it down so even at that you know and that's advertising and and they won't even call me back to explain to me what happened it's just now, well you um you we can't deal with marijuana this this group on this is the uh internet you know social marketing kind of thing where multiple people mm -hmm. go online and they get coupons basically right Right, okay. right. And, it's a way of purchasing customers. Now, are you, are you in advance of contacting these Groupon people or these merchant services people, are you clear with them about, you know, you do medical marijuana recommendations? Absolutely. I, I try to be very clear and transparent about what I'm trying to do. I mean, the recommendations are just a small part of what I offer here. We do, you know, community acupuncture, Reiki, massage. Um, we're developing all kinds of programs as far as, you know, pharmaceutical step-down programs or tapering off narcotics, those type of programs. We're developing our own internal insurance company because they don't want to work with us either. Um, so I'm always very open and transparent about what I do because I don't want them to shut me down later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You put all this money into it and then end up pull the rug out from underneath you later on is counterproductive. Right, right. Okay. And, uh, you know, with... The other thing, too, that's frustrating about this is, uh, you know, we've heard this story before with respect to dispensaries, you know, places that are actually mm -hmm. handling plants and handling medicine. Uh, you're not even involved in that. 
you know, ha -ha, I don't have anything to do with that. I, I do. The only thing I, that comes close is that I will um, refer patients out to different um, clubs and um, and such, just so that they have immediate access if they need it. Mm -hmm. So, what is the rationale they give? What are they? What rationale do they give for not wanting to do business? I mean, because you're not in any violation of any federal law whatsoever. You're not touching marijuana. There's no marijuana at your premises at all. What, what excuse do they give? Well, you know, a, a few of them are like, it, they won't have anything to do with marijuana at all. They want nothing to do with it. They feel like it tarnishes their image. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is um, legal, uh, especially with merchant services, because, you know, there's the FDI, uh, FDIC. They don't want to get involved with something that might be perceived as money laundering or, you know, or, or selling uh, cannabis and using their services for it. Hmm. So some of it I can understand, but then like with the Groupon thing, I haven't gotten a logical or reasonable explanation. Hmm. And so that's still ongoing? It's still ongoing. I've been trying to reach, um, you know, the manager um, to see if I couldn't, um, you know, kind of resolve it or work something out or, you know, something like that, but he won't even return my call. So at this point, I, I you know, it's like how much effort do you put into it? Right, right. How about uh, in trying to advertise or get uh, the message about your clinic out to, uh, you know, just the, the mainstream as far as newspapers or radio or TV, are they accepting of the, that type of advertising? Um, some are. There are some um, some uh, some um, stations or newspapers that are willing. Um, but even at that, they they want you to be very subtle about the cannabis. They don't want you to talk about it. They, you know, they, you have to you know basically divert patients to a different page so that it doesn't look like they're advertising. It's 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 kind of silly. They want they still want you to go back into the closet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, marijuana is mainstream in my view, so why should I be ashamed of what I'm doing? I'm not. Mm -hmm. And why should I feel, you know, the need to hide it because I'm not in the pot closet? Right. And, and as far as this, uh, as far as the Oregon program goes, I know we were covering earlier uh, this year or last year, uh, the uh, Oregon legislature talking about raising the fees on patients. Uh, has that happened yet? How is that affecting business? How is that affecting patients? Well, I think it's you know I, I, it's gonna it's supposed to take place October first. Um, I think they're still trying to negotiate what those fees are. I've heard different numbers thrown away around. Um, we are trying to um, get them to accept a clause to have them expire in, in 2013. Whether that will or not, I don't know. Again, you know, we've got a few weeks to sort everything out. I think that we will find some patients are not going to be able to afford the program, um, but they will be able to afford the black market. So it's going to encourage that, um, you know, for patients to go back out to the black market behind them in the dark parking lot. But, um, I, I, you know, I, I, so I do expect business to slow down somewhat, um, in that regard, but I, I don't, I don't necessarily think so. I think some people will find the, the legal benefit in it and will still want the protection. Okay. We're speaking with Iva Cunningham, uh, head of Alternative Medical Choices in Portland, Oregon, a uh, holistic wellness clinic offering acupuncture and massage therapy, medical marijuana rec recommendations. And another thing that you're offering out there, and, and again, the website's altmedchoices.com if you want information on this. But uh, another thing you're offering out there that I think is uh, neglected in our community a lot is a Assistance. You've got someone there who helps people uh, negotiate the uh, the financial and and residential assistance things that so many patients uh, need. Tell our audience more about that. Well, we have a, um, a retired social worker that it comes in on a volunteer basis, and primarily her job is just to help people who ask for it, who need it, um, help them find you know transition housing safe housing navigate social service systems like whether that be getting food stamps or getting a surgery paid for or you know whatever she runs the whole gamut but sometimes those processes can be overwhelming and hidden and you know and if you've got a health issue to deal with or if you're dealing with one crisis you know how much time or attention do you really have to do that so what Deborah does is she just helps you go through the process kind of holds your hand guides you through it tells you what to fill out um, those kinds of things. And she can either do it on the phone or you can come in with, um, you know, for a visit. But really that's her whole goal is just to help patients get back on their feet um, so that they can deal with their health care. 
I'm glad I'm glad you've got that going because you know people forget that uh, you know, in addition to the health care you've got to you know have a part of your health is having a safe place to live and having you know food in your belly and stuff. Right. And those, those are things that uh, are very helpful out there. Well, exactly. I, you know, I always kind of feel like if you if you're dealing with you know where you're going to get your next meal or where your house is going to come from, where you're going to spend the night, how much time and attention can you really give to your health? You've got too much on your plate. And trying to resolve some of those life problems just really does take somebody who knows how to navigate those systems. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, most of us just don't know how. Yeah. All right. So uh, looking forward to 2012, there are numerous uh, petitions going around, people trying to uh, pass uh, various forms of regulation of cannabis for all people, healthy people included. Mm -hmm. There's a privacy amendment out there, and I think there's one out there that's uh, trying to get support once again for some sort of regulated dispensary system for patients. Uh, As you look forward to 2012, what would you like to see to best help your clientele, to best help your patients? Well, I mean, I think it's twofold. I, I really would like to see legalization, uh, honestly, because there's more people who deserve to use cannabis without worrying about prosecution. Um, you know, but I also think and feel very strongly that we need to have some sort of regulated supply system. Um, you know, if you're starting tomorrow chemo and you get your card today, you don't have 16 weeks to wait for your harvest or, you know, for most people even longer than that for you to get someone who can supply you with any kind of medicine that isn't going to take advantage of you. You know, and sometimes those relationships between producer and patient are di- difficult to manage and, and tenuous at best. So it, it helps if we have some place that's safe for that ill person to go to without worrying about whether this place is going to be busted or whether they're getting ripped off or, you know, their safety is compromised. Um, you know, so I, I, my feeling is there's a lot of initiatives out there. Sign every one of them. Sign every single thinking one of them. And then whatever lands on the ballot, vote for it. Because as long as we can keep the, the, you know, the topic live and move the ball forward, it's going to ben- all, benefit all of us. No, it may not be perfect the first time out, but if you can just support what's there, you support all of us and yourself. Move that ball forward. It's progress. All right. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, Iva Cunningham from Alternative Medical Choices. Check them out at altmedchoices.com. And uh, thanks for being on the show today. You're welcome. Have a great day, you guys. All right. When we come back, it's Todd's Toker Topic. Stay tuned. Have you considered medical marijuana? Double-blind, peer-reviewed studies have found cannabinoid therapies to be successful in treating the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, brain cancers, chronic pain, diabetes mellitus, dystonia, fibromyalgia, GI disorders, hepatitis C, HIV AIDS, hypertension, incontinence, MRSA, multiple sclerosis, osteoporosis, pruritus, rheumatoid arthritis, sleep apnea, and Tourette's syndrome, as well as anecdotal evidence suggesting relief from anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress, plus reduction in the need for narcotic painkillers. Side effects of medical marijuana can include euphoria, relaxation, anxiety, panic reactions, paranoia, tachycardia, dry eyes, dry mouth, concentration and reaction time impairment, appetite increase, and in 37 states, arrest and incarceration. But medical marijuana is non-toxic and cannot cause overdose. Medical marijuana, it's not for everyone. All right, welcome back. We haven't had the chance to record the actual introduction yet, so we're going to do one on the fly here. Joining us in studio once again, comedian Todd Armstrong, the man behind Goob the Knob on Twitter and Facebook. (laughs) If your knob has been goobed, this is the man to find. (laughs) How you doing, Todd? (laughs) Excellent, excellent. How's it going, Russ? Doing really good. Uh, I don't even know what the Toker topic is today. I think it was... Ganja wife came up with this. Ganja yes. wife came up with this. Okay, yeah. so uh, let's uh, let's throw it to Todd. Oh, perfect. You're on. Thank you so much, Russ. Uh, and again, thanks to Nikki Ganja wife. Uh, she gave the topic of secret stoner movies. Oh. Uh, she's frustrated with. The, she was frustrated with the cliches, I guess. Of we all know the Cheech and Chong. Sure. The you sure. know I love the stupid stoners. The cliche they get. And then Big Lebowski, of course, the lovable apathetic loser that you really think's a winner on the inside, which you know you should get up off the couch and do something. <laughs> like, <laughs> of course, half baked. Everybody loves that. That's like. Sure. A comic book version of a real life stoner situation. 
And uh, for most guys, anyway, Star Wars, which is just reenacting your childhood with laser noises. <laughs> but uh, I guess to focus on the connoisseur movies, uh, these are the movies that I know were invented just for stoners that people really don't talk about. And first and foremost is The Matrix. Come on. I mean, the first yeah. time you ever saw The Matrix on that DVD stand, you bought a DVD player. Like, it spoke <laughs> to you. Never go baked into a Fred Myers. You'll get one ice cream and two a DVD player. <laughs> That's what the 90s were about. Uh, second, along the same time era, Kill Bill. Yeah. Who else is going to sit around for four and a half hours and watch a fucking spaghetti western with ninjas? <laughs> 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 with rad as shit, like operatic music, unless it's a total baked group of stoners. That's a... That's like the brandy of stoner movies right there. Uh, and then Labyrinth, the, the odd sexual twist of Labyrinth, where you're so turned on enough to almost touch yourself no matter what gender you are, Jennifer Conley, but then, boom, David Bowie shows up in tights and you can see his penis. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so it's that odd tempting fate. And then you also have Twisted Muppets to make you laugh. <laughs> very much. And, for, uh, and, and a very secret stoner movie. Not, people, not very many people know about this fight club. Fight Club. We, we feel we were so smart because we all saw Tyler Durden in those couple flashes at the beginning part, and we like to tell yeah. all our friends that <laughs> we were the first one in the group to see it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, of course, of course, my personal favorite secret stoner movie, Shaun of the Dead. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, I mean, what else do stoners love but to laugh and to watch zombies eat people? And just the amazing parody... Uh, Simon Pegg is a genius. They also catch, uh, you know, I forgot what it was, Hot Fuzz. Fabulous Hot Fuzz movie, great. but not necessarily a stoner movie, more of an 80s child movie. Uh, and I'm going to get to the star of all stoner films in my heart, Bruce Campbell. Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> weed loves Bruce Campbell, and Bruce Campbell loves weed, because Army of Darkness, that was for us. That was for us. <laughs> that was for us. And if you really, really you say, and that was stoner stuff. I'm gonna get. In, this is hash oil movie. Bubba Hotep. If you're a hash <laughs> head, Bubba Hotep. Because conspiracy. We got. I mean, there's a bag of sand in there. If that tickled your heart, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, and lastly, uh, Watchmen. That's Watchmen, our. That's a much loathed movie. But for stoners, we love it. It's sexy. It's twisted. We like the dark graphics. Uh, and finally, stoners, we love stand-up. We love stand-up. That's why I'm here. Dave Chabelle, for what it's worth, and Eddie Murphy, delirious. Mm -hmm. You will never laugh harder at both what he's wearing in the leather suit <laughs> and both what he's saying. <laughs> it's amazing. The hardest I've ever laughed as a child was, was to delirious baked off my ass. And the true, the absolute diamond of the heart of all stoners is documentaries. I mean, they are absolute. They, they were invented for us because we were too lazy to read a fucking book. And it's just, <laughs> it's, like, it's like having a book read to you over the course of two hours. Thank you, BBC Horizon, Frontline, Planet Earth. Because without that, we would never see slow motion hummingbirds and say things like, there's no way that's real. <laughs> there's no way that's actually happening. And time lapse of the moon going across the sky, and planet <laughs> Earth, and of course the universe. All of these things just make you feel so small. So, I've just brought this up to you, Secret Stoner movies. Is I'm guilt tripping you into please donate to public television because half your weekend's spent to it. Thank you guys very much. I'm Todd Armstrong. Yeah. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> See you next Tuesday, Todd, on the uh, Todd's Toker Topics. Thanks so much. Hey, when we come back, we'll have some time for some radical rant. Now, where is that recipe? Let's see. Mm -hmm. about five, six Damn. Minutes, Apple pies are hard. Normal Show Live is actually live every weekday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern at live.normal.org. You want answers? I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You and I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical Branch. Well, our day here at Rolla J Studios got started a little uh, on the dark side as we got contacted, both Ganja John and I got contacted by the namesake of the studio, Rolla J, who contacted us uh, to let us know that uh, indeed the uh, the difficulties that he had earlier with the uh, the cops and everything have come to fruition and uh, they're now looking for him. I got a warrant. And I, you know, I, I got to ask myself, what kind of country are we where we're going to threaten to lock up this guy uh, <laughs> for, for growing plants? You know, uh, 
never before have I met someone uh, as generous as Jason Rivera, giving us, you know, everything that we use to put this studio together, to put this show together day after day, just out of the goodness of his heart, just because, you know, he, he felt that it was a, a good thing to do and that this, this that we could use it and maybe help push along legalization. And so, you know, when this drug war hits you personally like this, when you got, you know, cops and feds looking to put your friends away for five years or more, it, it, it really brings this home and it really makes this uh, one of the most important things we can do is to end this this marijuana prohibition. Now, I have put the word out uh, to one of my attorney friends in the Bay Area, uh, Omar Figueroa, who is currently actually been doing some work on some of these San Leandro Police Department cases. And so we're, we've got uh, Omar on the job here and he's going to be helping out Rola J. I, I've exchange their numbers and they should be in touch with each, each other and get this all figured out and uh and and thanks very much to omar figueroa for taking the time uh to do this you know we just saw him at seattle hemp fest he's a big friend of the show says he listens to the show on his commute so uh him helping us out helping rolla j out this is how this community can come together and this is how we can all band together to help end this prohibition and at least until then help to try to keep ourselves out of a prison cell and this led me to uh, some information that uh, that Omar pointed out to me uh, that San Leandro Police Department actually has some uh, some black marks on its uh, record here with regards to marijuana. I wanted to turn to the story that we uh, pulled out of a blog here uh, called San Leandro Talk. You can find this at San Leandro Talk dot voxpublica.org and you know when they got a latin website name that's got to be good right san leandro talk dot voxpublica.org and uh, this is filed on may 20th actually and it has to do with a san leandro cop named jason jason frederickson jason frederickson uh, uh was arrested for selling pot <laughs> san leandro police detective jason frederickson aka big dirty <laughs> was charged today with furnishing marijuana to a confidential informant for sale. Apparently, he was having an affair with the said informant. His wife, Cheryl Confreros, a.k.a. The Riz, uh, Fredrickson, is a dispatcher for the San Leandro Police Department. So, the cop was married to the dispatcher and having an affair with the informant. Both are on paid administrative leave. Love that, don't you? And cops get busted for selling weed. They go on paid administrative leave. Look, we don't want you to do any work, but in the meantime, have some money. A search of the couple's Danville home revealed evidence of the marijuana sale. Police police do not yet know where he got the pot. Well, I'll give you three guesses, and the first two start with evidence locker. Fredrickson is a detective in the Vice Narcotics Unit, <laughs> right? Keep close to the supply, and a member of San Leandro's SWAT team. He is 38 years old and a graduate of Las Lomas High School in Walnut Creek. According to one profile, and this is him, this is the cop writing about himself. After high school, I enlisted in the U.S. Air Force and pursued a career as a firefighter. After the military, I worked several unappealing jobs, then found my way into law enforcement. I started my career as a deputy sheriff, then moved to a municipal police department and started my career as a patrol officer. As of 2005, I've been a sworn officer for six years. I am the father of a beautiful little girl. In my free time, enjoy spending time with good friends and building nostalgia hot rods. Now, uh, this cop, this cop who was uh, busted for selling pot, and uh, have you know was having the affair with uh, with the informant. This cop's total compensation, annual compensation for this fella, one hundred ninety three thousand two hundred thirty three dollars a year. Hundred and ninety three thousand six figure income, close to two hundred thousand dollars in total compensation for this guy. Uh, and yet he needed to make a little extra selling weed. Uh, Fredrickson married Confreros in 2009. In 2010, they bought their Sonora Avenue home in Danville for $1.1 million. Okay, so living in a million-dollar home, making almost $200,000 a year. The San Leandro Police Department, under Chief Spagnoli, has taken a very strong position against medical marijuana dispensaries coming to town. They've gone as far as to lie to the city council about the medicinal value of medical marijuana, claiming it has none. Meanwhile, they apparently have failed to police the activities of their own members. The investigation of Fredrickson's activities apparently came as a result of a tip from a San Leandro resident, not any internal control mechanisms they may have. Now, uh, this is also this story, again, this comes uh, in May from the San, San Leandro Talk blog. In June, they updated it. 
In a seemingly unrelated event, this cop's father, John Fredrickson, has been arrested on charges of molesting a young female relative from 1988 to 1992. He's, re he's recently been in therapy for his compulsion. Aha. Uh -huh. So these are the kind of cops you got running around San Leandro and uh, taking tips from informants here to go bust guys like Rolla J, patients in wheelchairs who are growing marijuana to uh, take care of themselves. Uh, but meanwhile, while they're living in their seven figure homes and making their six figure incomes, they're taking some of the pot and selling it on the side. And uh, God, you know, it, this is this is the world we live in now with with this uh this ridiculous prohibition continuing to try to imprison people uh just for the growing of plants and here once again we have a, a cop a corrupt cop uh in san leandro who's on paid administrative leave who's not likely to see any sort of the time that the feds are going to threaten my friend with right because uh he's got the badge right he's supposedly one of the good guys here uh what the other thing you know this this marijuana prohibition gives this cops the job to do right and ends up corrupting them as well you know we often talk about getting rid of marijuana prohibition just to stop the cops from arresting us but let's also get rid of marijuana prohibition to stop the co to stop one avenue of corrupting the police officers you know th this is how the marijuana prohibition affects people even when they're not involved uh with marijuana in any way whatsoever is we have cops that will feel like well they're just druggies we can we can steal from the evidence locker they're just druggies we can take their their place we can burst into their homes and you know to you know kind of paraphrase the old Niemöller poem first they came for the druggies but i wasn't a druggie so i didn't speak up well now they're coming for gibson guitars with armed swat raids now they're coming for the raw milk dairy farmers with armed swat raids uh, there was recently a club here in portland that got busted a uh, sex trafficking ring and they got busted and they went in with the full SWAT raid as if, you know, the strippers were going to pull automatic weapons out of their garter or something. I mean, I, I agree that we, you know, we need to enforce the laws. We definitely need to enforce the laws in, in certain situations, but the, this, this knee jerk reaction to go to using overwhelming force, right? To using these SWAT teams in every situation that doesn't really merit it. You know, if you've got some evidence that you're going against some, uh, you know, some well-armed gang that's going to be likely to employ violence, then yeah, that's what SWAT's for. Uh, but originally SWAT was built to handle uh, terrorist situations, to handle uh, kidnappings and, and where there was violence already occurring. They weren't really thought of as being a, a preventative measure to stop violence from occurring, but that's the way they're being used now. We're using these, these SWAT teams as overwhelming force when overwhelming force is not necessarily needed. It's a shock and awe technique. It's built to terrorize our population, and I'm sick and tired of the American citizens being terrorized by what's supposed to be our own domestic police force. And so if you're not involved with marijuana and you don't think this affects you, think again. Because it's only a small trip between the, the cops disrespecting our rights and disrespecting the rights of anybody they happen to think is a criminal for whatever reason. And you know, we see the same thing with respect to the uh, taser. And the taser was originally brought up to, you know, it'll be a non-lethal use of force. We won't have to shoot people anymore. Well, the shootings have stayed about the same. There's still the same number of shootings. Now there's also taserings right for contempt of cop for not obeying for being uncompliant we are using these torture devices on people so let's continue to work to end marijuana prohibition let's take away the opportunities for the corruption for the violence against our own people for the militarization of our own police forces employing blimps for god's sake dirigibles to fly around our neighborhoods to peek into our gardens to peek into our windows I mean, this is not the America we want to live in. And they're just slowly but surely tearing apart our constitutional freedoms all in the name of this stupid war on drugs. And when it hits home, when it hits someone you know, when someone you know is facing warrants and cops chasing them and possible time in prison, it all becomes that much more serious. All right, well, 
Thanks, everybody, for checking out the show. And that's our Radical Rant for today. We'll be back with Hour 2, Toker Talk Radio. Got a couple other stories to talk about. Todd's here. Cannabis Cure made his way into the studio as well. We'll have plenty of folks here taking your calls and just shooting the breeze. I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. For Cannabis Carry, Ganja John, and Wiz Coleco, we'll see you next time. And until then, take care of each other, Tokers. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Take it on one more time. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down to earth.